morning. We are learning new de details, several new details this morning about the failed Republican candidate for the New Mexico State House who was arrested after allegedly orchestrating a series of shootings at the homes of Democratic officials. Solomon Pena, a staunch supporter of former President Donald Trump and backer of false claims of election fraud, was denied bail yesterday during his first court hearing in Albuquerque on charges he masterminded four shootings and took part in at least one after he lost his state house race last November. No one was hurt in the shootings, but Willie, this raises so many questions about Trump's big lie and the whole concept of, uh, I didn't win, so I'll steal it, and spawning more violence. I mean, you have to see the connection. Yeah, it's a disease, and this wasn't a close race, as we said yesterday. He got absolutely wiped out, so there's yeah. no contest, but he says he, in his diseased mind that the election was rigged, and NBC News now has learned between the November election and when the shootings began in early December, the 39-year-old Pena is said to have visited the homes of multiple local officials unsolicited, unannounced, complaining about election fraud and what he perceived to be voter inconsistencies. According to one official, Pena told them the number of doors he knocked on during the campaign did not match up with the number of votes he received. Therefore, the count could not possibly be accurate. Pena also vented his frustrations online, insisting on social media the election he lost was fraudulent and that he was contesting the results. In November, he tweeted he supported former President Trump's 2024 White House bid. Pena also wrote he, quote, never conceded his November race and was, quote, researching his options. On December 10th, Pena responded to a tweet from Democratic House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries, who wrote, quote, Violent insurrectionists and extreme MAGA Republicans are melting down over repeated election losses, so the accused Dems of undermining democracy get lost. That's the tweet from Jeffries. Pena responded that New Mexico's elections were, quote, absolutely rigged and that we will pursue justice, in his words. Pena then responded to another mm -hmm. user who wrote that he would never win his district, writing, quote, incorrect. Once the rigging is stopped, I will be sworn in as the state rep for District 14. It is rigged. Wow. Okay. So, Danny, uh, first of all, what questions come to mind when you look at this case, and does it pertain to anything on a national level, in your opinion? It absolutely pertains to, it actually absolutely goes to a national level because uh, this is a deep concern about threatening members who are members of a legislative branch or people who would run for office. What's interesting here is that you have a situation where when it comes to federal law, there may not be a lot of federal laws that apply neatly to this controversy uh, because most federal laws dealing with uh, intimidation of voters or people who are running for office are limited to the federal offices that they're running for. So uh, in this case, this will most likely stay a state case. And the other yeah. thing to think about is that they have the co-conspirators at this point. They have a lot of evidence. And what you're likely going to see is they're going to cooperate these co-conspirators and those co-conspirators will come into court point the finger at this defendant and identify him. These are ideal people that the government will go to and cooperate because they have plenty of liability. By all indications, this was hardly the perfect crime. It was a stupid crime. And when you have stupid co-conspirators, the state goes to them and says, hey, you know, how loyal are you to this guy who's definitely going down? They'll end up cooperating. They have a lot of other circumstantial evidence. But this you see the parallels be... to Donald Trump here. I mean, I, it's kind of hard to, not to go there. I mean, wouldn't the Department of Justice, in their investigation of the big lie on January 6th, look at things like this happening across the country as connected? Yeah, so you bring up an interesting point, and I have to bring us back to the January 6th prosecutions, in which some of the defendants raised the defense of Trump made me do it. Uh, and that was really interesting because as a defense attorney, you don't get to pick your facts. Prosecutors pick the facts they take to trial. So in fairness to the defense, as wacky as that defense sounds that Trump made me go into the Capitol, uh, sometimes as a defense attorney, you don't have a lot. So you come up with whatever you can, whatever the judge will let you put into evidence, mm -hmm. and you try your best. Is it successful? 
Probably not. But the mere fact that it's being considered as a possible defense uh, tells us that we're at a different political place in this country where you can even consider saying that the president made me do it. That kind of defense is usually reserved to crazy people at home who think, you know, their TV's bugged or that aliens had landed in their backyard. This is not a defense you ever would have imagined 10 years ago or even six, seven years ago. Uh, it's it's madness, but it is an indication. This, the New Mexico uh, conspiracy shooter, this is an indication that we're at a different place in our political history where you can say, I got so riled up by my political beliefs, by my commitment uh, to my political party or side or conservative, liberal, that I went out there and took things into my own hands. Uh, but this is, I mean, this is a fascinating case about how far you can go when you feel, however wrongly, that you have had an election taken away from you. And this wasn't idle chatter by some nut online. The, sh the shootings happened. L thank God no one was injured. Nobody was, it was hit by the bullets. But there was a 10-year-old girl of a state senator who woke up in the middle of the night and said, Mom, I think there are spiders, spiders in my bed. Yeah. It was the sheetrock from the bullet hole that had sprayed, you know, the dust from that that had landed on her bed. This was real stuff with real people's lives in the crosshairs. So... As you said, a, a terrible crime. We see all this intent that leading up to it, all these tweets, all this rhetoric, doorbell cams of his visiting the houses. Seems like a relatively easy case for prosecutors. Yes, this is one of the cases that they already have a ton of circumstantial evidence. And you know what you find nowadays? Law enforcement loves things like social media. They love things like text messaging and the fact that your iPhone backs everything up to the cloud and a lot of people don't realize that. Technology has made it a lot easier to come up with circumstantial evidence. And I swear, this is not the first time and not the last time that I will see a photograph That's of right. a defendant in an idiotic pose with a bunch of guns mm -hmm. and, or yeah. you know, maybe sometimes it's a bunch of drugs or whatever. But sure enough, photos have already emerged here yeah. of suspects with a table full of firearms. And I'm telling you, that has happened plenty of times. For some reason, modern criminals uh, decide to post their doings up online on their social media. Maybe they think it makes them look cool. I'll tell you, you know who loves it the most? Police. They love it. The first thing they do is scour the social media of a suspect, and they almost always find something good. So I understand that we can stay on a local level with this and look at the uh, Trump made me do it defense, but I'm actually turning that around and saying this is the case against Trump. All these smaller uh, but incredibly important and increasingly dangerous events across the country where people decide, you know what, it was a lie. I did want win and I'm going to follow someone who believes in the big lie like me, who started the big lie, Donald Trump, Jen Paul Mary. I mean, at some point, you look at the influence he has had across the country, the, the division that he started in his campaign, campaign promoting violence in his presidency, which started with Charlottesville, Lafayette Park, January 6th, you name it. The man has promulgated violence and division across the country. And at some point you wonder if in the investigation of January 6th and the investigation of the big lie and putting this all together, if you can't not draw a direct line between Donald Trump and what is happening with violence across our country as it pertains to politics. Yeah, and I don't know if you can do that legally, but I think when he, you saw, when he saw that tweet that Willie read from Hakeem Jeffries and that he responded to, and he's like, he said that it was rigged and he was going to pursue justice. Well. You know what? What model was set for pursuing justice by the, the Trump former president of the United States? You say it was rigged, and then you resort to violence, and and you know that's what we saw with January six. And among the things that's troubling about this case in New Mexico is sometimes when you had this happen, and you said you know before it's like a you know maybe it's a disturbed person at home that said the president made me do it. This is not a lone wolf. This is somebody who got a gang of people together. Yeah. Assembled a team who was down with this. That's yeah, the assembled crazy a team of people who all agreed that this was the righteous thing to do, right? They think, what does that look like? And they think, the, you know, they think they are following the model of the, president, you know, the former president of the United States. And, but this is... You know, it's just not even, it's not even an anomaly anymore. No, no, it's not. And Elise, I mean, you were here sitting in this very studio as we were following all of Trump's violent tweets and the crazy things that would happen. And we would talk about how dangerous this is, how it is changing our democracy, undermining our democracy. This is fascist behavior. And this is what happens 
as a result of it. Well, the delusion has gone mainstream among the followers of Donald Trump, unfortunately. Not completely, but you see how this is getting pretty. This is someone running for office. Right, and he's actually approved. He's, he's participating in by the, the state the, party. In the, in the so you see where it's gone just from Donald Trump's talk, which how for, how many times were we all told, oh, it's just loose talk, he doesn't mean it. And right. there were people who were in on the joke. So many Republicans were in on the joke. Right. Well, there are plenty of people who aren't in on the joke now, and it's scary. Right. And